How's it going guys? I'm Robert from Machado Visuals and today I just wanted to do a really quick overview of what's in my camera AKS case. So for some that might not know, AKS can mean a variety of things. It could be an abbreviation for the word accessories. It could mean uh, all kinds of stuff. I like thinking of it as all kinds of shit because it just has everything I need related to cameras. So usually in an AKS case, it's just full of literally camera accessories of stuff that you may or may not need on the job. It's just helpful to have with you. So that's why I kind of like having it all within one uh, case. So this case specifically is the Pelican 1560. Um, it fits a lot more than a 1510 or 1535 obviously, but it's not so humongous um, that it's gonna be just so overbearing. So I like this because it's compact enough that it fits just about what I need and is able to get me by. So opening it up here, you can see that it's laid out with your standard Trek pack and everything kind of has its own section. And most of the time too, when I bring this out on jobs, every job is different. So I won't always bring the same stuff. So sometimes these filters are gone. Sometimes I don't need this wireless bag. Sometimes I'll switch out these pouches for something else. So it always kind of changes depending on the job I'm on. Uh, but starting over here on the left side, we have this uh, little wireless bag. And I just talked about these in a recent video. These are uh, cord bags. So they're basically little gear pouches. I am obsessed with these because they're super high quality and you can use them for basically anything. Um, really quick to give an overview on this bag. It's obviously got the clear window so you can see what's inside in the front. It's got a little, also a label window up here. And it's got a Velcro strip. Um, that you can put your own patches or your own labels up here. On the back, you got molly webbing as well as these snap hooks, and which I love these because you can either tuck them back in to kind of make it really compact and there's nothing hanging out, or you can take this guy out and then clip it onto your cart or clip it onto a carabiner, clip it onto a backpack, whatever. Uh, but yeah, this is my little wireless bag. So this basically just has my Bolt 4K and um, some antennas as well as the like V-lock mounting bracket. But I usually like transporting my Teradek in here much more than like my big case. I have the array, so the case is like, the case is probably bigger than this whole AKS case. So it doesn't really make sense for me to transport most of the time when I just need the transmitter and receiver. So that's why I kind of just stick with these neat little cord bags. Moving over on this bottom section, I just have a collection of filters, mainly diopters. Um, so I have a half, plus one, and plus two. And so if you're unfamiliar, diopters are basically like eyeglasses for your lens. So you can throw this in front of a map box and then it kind of changes where infinity lands on your lens. So you can end up getting a lot closer to things and it almost kind of turns your lens into a macro lens without actually having a macro lens. So. If I had the option, I would always prefer to actually get a true macro lens, but when you're in a pinch, diopters are great. They're also really great for when you're using anamorphic lenses because anamorphic lenses usually don't have the you know, closest close focus, so throwing a diopter can help you get into a close-up much more easily. And then below the diopters here, I just have a standard collection of polarizers, which I'll kind of use for different applications. Um, this one is your standard rotopola. So standard rotopola would go into just a regular four x five map box. Um, it's pretty universal and it has the gears on the front to actually change the polarization. So this is your standard four x five linear polarizer. So it does the same thing as a rotopola. It's just uh, in a four x five size. And sometimes actually what I'll do is you can stack this in front of a rotopola and then what you end up getting is a variable ND. So if I can show you here, as I rotate the tray, you can see that the density increases and decreases. So whenever you actually do use variable NDs, this is all it is. It's just two polarizers stacked together. And the more you know. And lastly, this final polarizer is just a 138 mil um, round polarizer. Literally exact same thing, just different form factor. So I can fit this in a Misfit Atom Pola, or if I you know, have a one tray that accepts 138 mil filters, I'll use this guy instead. So they're all kind of different um, applications, different uses, but they all do the same thing and that's polarized. 
Moving up, I just have a collection of smaller pouches. So in this first one, um, I usually just carry whatever media for the job I'm using. So whatever camera I'm using, I'll stick cards in here as well as card readers. So that way I'm just pulling out one pouch. And if I'm meeting managing or someone else is meeting managing, I can just hand this off to them and then they can find everything that they need in here. So for instance, in here, I just have a bunch of CF Express Type A cards as well as the card reader stashed back here and this smaller zipper in the back as well as a hard drive and a couple other kind of micro SD cards. So again, I really love these little port cord bags because they come in a bunch of different sizes and they just, I don't know, they're just super convenient. I'm, I, I love these guys so much. Behind it, I have another cord bag. Um, this one just has Atomos SSD. So I use Atomos monitors a lot, especially for my BTS. So I like recording the camera feeds to showcase in my videos. So in here, I just have a bunch of SSDs and I won't always necessarily bring this cord bag. Sometimes I'll swap it out for something else that makes more sense for the job. But in this case, that's what's in here. Behind it, I have a little shape pouch with um, a bunch of just BNC cables. So these are just different, a uh, bunch of different lengths. The nice thing is that they're also color coordinated so you can kind of match what camera you're using, whether it's A, B, or C camera. This kit is really nice because it comes with a bunch of different lengths of cable. That comes with a bunch of short ones, a bunch of long ones. And so basically whatever kind of length you need, you have. Stepping on over to the right, I have uh, the Cinebag that has my onboard monitor on it. So this has the seven inch uh, Cine 7, and that's usually the size that I like using. Um, you can also fit a five inch in here. And the nice thing about it is that it has this compartment up top to where you can fit all your other accessories. Like for instance, I have a sun hood, a couple monitor arms, and then I have data cables because I do have the camera control licenses. So every now and then I'll use them. So I have both the red and RE uh, camera control cables in here. If I'm like renting this out, sometimes I'll leave power and SDI in here, but usually I don't because I keep them somewhere else in my case. So moving up on the top left, I have your standard kind of lens cleaning solutions, like your basic Chemtech wipes, some Pancro, as well as a kind of little rocket blower to get the dust off. So order of operations, you blow the lens off with dust, you spray some Pancro onto your Chemtech, and then you kind of gently wipe it clean. Um, and if you're interested in any of this stuff, I'll leave links down in the description if you're interested in checking it out. Moving on over to the right, I have some matte box backings. So these are the kind of standard ones that would fit on a Airy LMB. They're the bright tangerine ones, but I just have a bunch of different ones uh, depending on kind of what lenses I'm using. So 114 are your kind of traditional run of the mill cinema lenses, 95, same thing. Um, I've actually adapted all my E-mount lenses to 85 um, so that I can also use 82 millimeter variable NDs if I need to. And then I think I have one set of lenses that use 80. So um, by keeping them in this little slot, I always have kind of what I need for each specific backing. So it's really nice having them here. So over on the right, I have a couple other knickknacks and doodads like a 19 mil rod, a little flashlight, as well as a Sharpie. I kind of like the retractable ones just because I don't like losing caps and it's super easy to click and unclick when I'm making labels or anything like that. Uh, but your mileage may vary. And at the very top, I just have three sets of 15 mil rods. Um, so I just keep different lengths. So depending on my camera or how you know long of a rod I need. These are the Bright Tangerine drumsticks. Um, they're titanium. They're super lightweight, but they're also super, super strong. Um, I love these to death just because of how, how stinking light they are. And I carry three sets. So moving up to the top here, I have a lid organizer from Jason Cases. So you can order this directly from them and it just kind of Velcros on to the top of the case. You just replace the foam that comes with it. And I really like having this because obviously it's super well organized and fits all of the cables and all of the adapters and other organizational trinkets that you might have and makes it really easy to identify where it is and what's in the pouch. And so a lot of times when I'm, you know, talking to my AC or whoever's helping me out, I can tell them to go into my AKS case and then between the bottom and the top, they're 
kind of easily able to find whatever I'm asking them to to get. So I'll just kind of run along them really quick and just kind of explain what's in them. So this first pouch here, um, I have short SDIs. So obviously this one is pretty self-explanatory. They're just kind of shorter length BNC cables for onboard monitors and stuff like that. And then same thing with the very next one. Uh, I have just longer length BNC. So if the monitor is all the way kind of towards the front of the camera, and obviously the BNC port is usually somewhere on the back of the camera, this will be able to make that run. I have HDMI cables. Um, every now and then I'll need them for whatever, whether you know it's plugging in an Atomos recorder to record some monitor feed or whatever like that. Um, I have them. I don't really use them, but again, it is, it is nice to have. Uh, and then to the right of that, I just have a couple barrels and adapters. So barrels are really cool because you can actually connect two lines together and kind of extend them. Um, you usually don't want to go past 100 feet. If you do, you'd usually want something like a uh, STI repeater. Uh, but these are nice for a lot of those shorter lengths. If I just need to connect two 25s or even 250s, these will get the job done. And then these are the kind of same idea. These are just, you know, right, on, right angle elbows. And these are super handy for if a port is a little bit hard to access on the camera. So you can just plug in a barrel and it just kind of terminates into a kind of right angle elbow here and it makes plugging in your monitor a lot easier. On the left here, I have two pin Limo cables. So these are just two pin to two pin. So depending on what camera I'm using, um, I like to kind of switch them up. Usually if I'm using my Alex or whatever, I'll, I'll stick to using two pin to two pins. Um, just straightforward, go, one goes into the monitor, one goes into the D-box, and it's a two-pin cable. The two-pin to D-tap is the same idea, except the other end just has a D-tap, so these are a little bit more universal because, you know, usually every camera, every battery has some sort of D-tap cable, um, so these I can basically just rely on for the most part. Right next to it, I just have D-tap adapters, so these are your kind of dummy batteries, so, uh, most of them in here are things like an MPF kind of adapter to D-tap. So if I am powering something like an Atomos or something like the Blackmagic Video Assist, they use MPF, I'll, I'll use something like this. Um, I also have a um, another D-tap adapter that powers my decimator. So that's really nice to just plug in without having to find a wall outlet or something like that and plug that all the way in, into there. I can just run it right off the battery. To the right, I just have your standard cable management goodies, and this can range from things to like bongo ties to gear ties. Um, I have the longer version as well as the shorter version. So depending on you know how thick um, the cable runs are, I have a gear tie that's long enough to accommodate that. I really like gear ties because they're flexible and they're obviously reusable. I'll still use Velcro ties every now and then, but I think I prefer using things like gear ties. I also have these neat little sprigs in here, which are really neat. So these are awesome because you can thread these into your camera cheese plate and then also route the cables right through these. So it's kind of built in cable management right on your body. So I really like using sprigs. So they come in 3 8 and also quarter inch versions. Starting on the bottom row, I just have a bunch of random USB-C as well as lightning cables because everyone always needs to charge their phone on set. Super important. Um, I also have a bunch of these retractable cables, which are really neat too, because you can just uh, pull them out and then they just self-retract. So they make kind of things really, really neat. Next door, I just have a bunch of wall chargers these are really great because um, these charge your phone really fast. Um, most of these Anchor ones have power delivery built in. So um, like I think this little stick has like 65 watts, which is, which is pretty insane. So this can charge a majority of devices. To the right of that, I just have some audio GAC and all it really is are some Velcro stickies for like tentacles. I also have uh, some spare earbuds in here. So if these are helpful if I'm ever running audio, which I prefer not to, or if I have a hop going into my camera and then I need to, or I want to listen to whatever talent's saying so I can kind of more easily follow the action if I'm doing some sort of like reality thing, these are really handy to have. 
And the last pouch here is just lens accessory stuff. So just more cleaning stuff. I have stuff like this kind of lipstick style brush, some more microfibers and a couple more lens solution bits there um, in case I ever run out or don't have my standard Kimtex and, and Pancro. So hopefully this video is helpful in some way. The idea behind this camera AKS is that I can bring it on to any job, whether I'm just operating or if I'm DPing and I basically have whatever I need for the job, whenever some random kind of small need comes up. There have been plenty of times where I've had some random crew member or some even like audio has come up to me and says, oh, I'm missing this one very specific tentacle cable and so we can't have time cut on one camera. Oh, I have that cable in my AKS, no problem. So I'll bust it out and you know, all of a sudden you be, end up becoming the hero of the day just because you have this one random cable. So having an AKS that's just has literally everything you might possibly need is, is coming so handy so many times. So I'd love to know what's in your AKS case and maybe some other organization tips if you have them. So feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.